Now I quite glibly allowed the word billion to slip off my tongue. Just a few hundred billion pounds to Scotland, a few billion more to Wales, a few hundred billion to Northern Ireland and a few to our friends on the continent. Does anyone know what a billion pounds looks like? I don't mean how many noughts. What's the feel of a billion? Well, if you wanted to save a billion pounds and you put a pound in your piggy bank every second of every 24 hours of every day, you would have had to start saving a few years before the Suez crisis. And if you're not so well off and could only afford a pound a minute, you would have had to have started saving before Jesus Christ was born. Now, if you could only afford a pound an hour, you would have been standing in line with the dinosaurs and very lonely because mankind had not yet arrived. Now that is one billion. We're talking about countless hundreds of billions. That explains why you have to sell your kids inheritance to get aged care for which you have already paid many times over and it explains why your standard of living is nowhere near that which you would expect from one of the world's leading economies. Mismanagement and theft on a cosmic scale and our friend Gordon was conducting the symphony at the time. The tune he played was the British National Anthem. He called the tune and we should ensure that he and his fellow instrumentalists pay the piper at some future time. We're the English. We're nice people. We do not like to offend anyone, so we take pride in defeat and play the game so that the opposition can enjoy it. We keep a stiff upper lip, turn the other cheek and have great humility. We would rather make fun of ourselves than denigrate others. Now that is a lovely quaint image that paints a lovely national image of those people who used to be called the English. For too long we have played the role of the English gentleman. I've had enough of standing back whilst others trample me down and empty my pockets. I do not want these foreign burglars in my house handing my life's work, my precious memorabilia and my family heirlooms out of the window to their friends and accomplices outside. For me the time has come to change. I am no longer prepared to have a nasty little nationalist like Gordon Brown tell me that I can't have a nationality, that I am a nobody. I am not having him tell me that I can't be represented by a parliament of my own people whilst he and his fellow infiltrators climb on my back in order that they can set up an infrastructure in their own country to secure a firm base for their inevitable independence and future well-being. He's not doing that to me. By accepting and promoting a British identity, we have connived in a plot to destroy ourselves. Whilst we've been waving the flag and singing God Save the Queen, they've been busy doing exactly the opposite. We sang God Save the Queen while Scotland the Brave's fifth columnist stole our pension, our future, our education, our resources, our health service, our wealth, our national identity and our streets. They have destroyed our ability to grow our own food, to manufacture our own goods. As part of a well orchestrated plan they are busy selling us so hard into Europe that we are now almost impotent, unable to resurrect our own nation or national fortunes. We are expected to keep a stiff upper lip. We are expected to turn the other cheek. We are expected to thank the Tartan Mafia at Westminster for our unelected regional government, for our ministers of the regions. We are to be grateful for the opportunity to finance the peripheral countries and endure the daily sight of our people dying through lack of drugs and aged care whilst reading of the wonderful lifestyle that we're financing for our fellow pseudo-Britons. We're powerless to stop them concreting over our countryside to build millions of houses in a country with a declining native population. These are immigrant towns that are designed to ensure that inward migration stays south of the border. I've had enough. We should all be shouting we've had enough. My anger is not confined to these creatures and their supporters that have such a grip on our country. It is a sobering thought that from the whole of England we struggle to get meaningful attendances for the only forum for English political voice. I am angry at the complacency, ignorance and inconsequentiality of our people. 50 million people who could only muster 200 to stride through the streets of our capital city demanding justice for their own country. 
I am angry that an English Nationalist Party cannot get sufficient funding or activists to construct a sustained and converted effort to remove the parasites from our political system. I am angry that every year 400,000 people who care about their quality of life and future try to secure it by running abroad for sanctuary, leaving their country ripe for colonisation. I am angry that they can live in the shadows of their warrior forefathers and wilt in front of a few northern invaders, a small group of hate-filled predators that are absolutely astounded at their own success and unexpected good fortune against the old enemy that used to be worthy of at least respect. I am angry at our failure to mobilise our people. If we had the English people behind us as the Scots, Welsh and Irish have theirs, the destructive malignancies that inhabit Westminster would not last a week. It is time for the people of England to take our country back and make our politicians do what the people demand of them, not the other way round. And if they don't, they should be made terrified to leave the relative safety of their own homes. Consider if the roles were reversed and the English tried to do this on the Scots. There would be a tartan Republican army ferrying truckloads of agrochemicals down the M6 to the tune of the bagpipes before we could even say, what's that whining sound? If anyone tried to pull the same stunt on the French, every lamppost down the Champs-Elysees would be decorated with a politician. Maybe it's time that we English change from full English to porridge out for breakfast, or perhaps a baguette and cheese. The English nationalist community, including our own party, now need to take the gloves off. Abandon politically correct claptrap, say it as it is, and start speaking the language of nationalists intent on freeing our country from foreign domination. Thank you.